Good morning, everyone. I'm fishing a brand new stream today. This is a cutthroat stream. I've never fished it before. I'm excited because it's been a while since I fished a stream that is primarily a cutthroat fishery. Uh, I actually camped here last night in the car. So it's a short commute this morning to the creek. I'm in Idaho. This is my home state. I'm fishing the Zentankara Suzumi with a 12 foot line on it. Uh, this rod might be a little bit short for this stream. There are some beaver ponds and some wider sections. Uh, I do have a 13 and a half foot rod with me that I might switch to. But let's start off with this guy. And I have a 12 foot line on here and an Idaho Killer Kabari fly. If you hear rustling or heavy breathing, there are cows in here. There are lots of cows in this area. I actually woke up this morning to my car moving. A couple of cows were, I think, licking or scratching themselves on the on the hitch receiver of my car. That was a new experience for me. Yeah, I got a little mini stampede over here. Welcome to the West, where a lot of the public land is open grazing country. There we go. First fish. Looks like a cutthroat to me. Definitely not a brown trout. It's got some beautiful reds and pinks that brown trout don't have. Okay, I'm gonna be doing a little bit more hand lining today than I normally do. And that is a cutthroat. Yeah, more hand lining because I do have that little bit of a longer line on here today. That's a beautiful fish, isn't it? Seven and four, it's an 11 inch, about 10 or 11 inch cutthroat. Fly's already out, I can see it right here. Awesome fish. Beautiful first fish, you can see that cutthroat slash under the jaw there. I don't know what kind of cutthroat these are. I don't know what drainage I'm in right now, actually. Let's uh, let this guy go. I'm pretty close to the border of Wyoming, and in this general area, there are several different species of cutthroat. There are Bonneville cutthroat, Colorado River cutthroat trout, Yellowstone cutthroat trout. And so I don't really remember which ones are in here. If I had to guess, I'd say they're Yellowstone, but uh, I don't know. Um, I'll, put a, I'll put on the screen here these subspecies of cutthroat. I, re I really don't know, so I'll have to look that up. Awesome, let's keep fishing. Whoa, there's a snake right there. I'm gonna pull out my iPhone. It has a, a 3X lens on it and film it for you guys. Pretty cool. Almost stepped on him. That's, oh, that's, that's above the fishing waders. Or that's above the hip waders. That sucks. Okay, well, the lower stream was a bust. I fished it for an hour, caught that one fish in the first like five minutes. I've gone a couple miles upstream now. There's a bridge here. And from the bridge, the stream goes into this canyon. It's a little bit steeper of a gradient. I don't know, might be better fishing in here. Let's give it a shot. I see a fish. I just saw a fish rise and it probably just saw me walk across the bridge here. <laughs> That's too bad. That's a bummer, but I'll still try. Maybe it didn't see me. This is so not secure. Let's cross the fence over here. I put an 11 foot line on here and there's this yellow thread-bodied fly already on here that's just trashed. It's already caught a few dozen fish on previous adventures. We'll see if we can if it can get the job done today. The water here looks much clearer. It's much more clear 
it's kind of cloudy down below where all those cattle were grazing. Oh, just spooked a fish. And that is a proper fish. I didn't see, I don't know if I included this in the video when I was down below, but I said a couple times that I didn't, I mean, I caught that first fish and I didn't even see other fish after that, aside from a little like three incher. There were just no fish down there. Very low fish density. So already I'm feeling a little bit more optimistic. Yeah, I'm spooking, I've spooked a couple of fish in here now. So there are more fish in this upper section already. Well guys, there's good news and bad news. Been fishing for about 20 minutes on this section. There are definitely more fish in here. That's the good news. The bad news is that they're very easily spooked. There we go. I thought that looked so good. There it is. That looks more like it. Yellowstone cutthroat are very yellow. And this guy is very yellow. This is a, a fine spotted variety of the Yellowstone cutthroat trout. You can see why, very, very fine spots. Unlike most other cutthroat that have larger spots that kind of congregate toward the, the tail here. Beautiful little fish, maybe eight or nine inches. Oh, I just lost my fly as I was trying to pull it off of some moss over here. Just as well as you saw that fly had seen better days. But that was awesome. That fish came right along the, uh, the little undercut bank here, right in the shade, right where you think you would think a fish would be. And I fished all along this section of it here alongside me here. And I got him from over there somewhere. Okay, got a new fly on here. It's kind of an ugly little thing. Uh, yellow thread body, brown soft hackle, and I don't remember the name of this yarn. This might be Dog Rose, might be Sun Glow, or Salmon, I don't know. But uh, I'll find out which one it is, and I'll put the name of this yarn on the screen. And of course you can buy all of these yarns that I tie my flies with from flytyingyarn.com, which is my store, my online store, helps support the channel. And it goes a little ways toward uh, making sure I can continue making these videos. Yes! Oh! He came off. Okay, that's a bummer. Fish on! Got him. It's another beautiful little cutthroat. Nice. A little like six incher. I've been catching a lot of brook trout lately and so I wanted to come here specifically to catch cutthroat. I'm glad it's panning out. I love catching cutthroat. They're my favorite fish to catch. They're just so emblematic of the West. And I feel like I haven't caught too many lately, so it's fun to, ah, mosquito bite on my thumb. Anyway, it's fun to catch cutthroat. Oh, you guys see that? Had one on it. I mean, that fish hit it as soon as it hit the water. I don't know if I was quite ready for it. That last mosquito bit me right below my thumbnail, like on the knuckle below my thumbnail. How annoying of a spot is that? Push on. Another little one. Oh, he's in and out of the net. There he goes.
This looks really nice over here. Yep. Oh, darn it. Yeah, I mean, I knew there would be a fish in there. It looks so good. And these cutthroat are spooked, or easily spooked. If these were brook trout, I could hook one on and then I could probably catch it again on the next cast or within a couple of casts. These cutthroat aren't like that. You hook them once and then they just run away. They run for cover. That's a good looking spot. Shade below a boulder. There's gotta be a fish in there. It's a terrible cast. There we go, yep. In the shade below the boulder. Got him. See ya, buddy. Fish on. Got him. One of the smaller ones here. Still a pretty little cutthroat though. Fish on. Two casts later and off. But it's the on part that counts, right? I set the hook and then I went directly into the tree behind me that I kind of forgot was there. This one's gonna be a goner. Yep, it's gone. Okay, tied a new fly on here. This one has uh, kind of a light gray hackle, a dun hackle, with some purple sparkly stuff and some, uh, some green dubbing and black thread head. Never fished with this pattern before, but there's no reason it shouldn't catch fish. There we go. Like I said, no reason. Shouldn't catch fish. Fish in creeks like this are not selective. They are not picky. See ya, buddy. These are such pretty fish. All right, let's catch one more. Fish on. Nice little fish, if I can get down to the water. Got him. Looks like the fly came out already. See you, buddy. I fished this upper section for an hour and a half, and I landed seven fish, lost, I think, four more. And that's in addition to the one fish that I caught in the lower section, which I think was the largest of the day. But uh, had a great time, apart from the mosquitoes and falling into the water and camera issues and fishing forever and not catching anything. That aside, I really did have fun, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching me on this little cutthroat trout fishing adventure. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you in the next one. Be sure to subscribe to the channel here if you haven't already, and don't forget to check out my flytyingyarn.com store if you're looking for yarn for your fly tying needs. And then finally, I have another YouTube channel called SUV RVing that covers all of my non-fishing adventures. If you want to check that out, links to all of those things and more will be in the video description.